All right, let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Waha, Raka Kodash. In Hebrew, that will be giving praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and that's in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us His truth. Honors to the brethren that's laboring during the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Also, honors to the hopeful we lack and peace and blessings to those who are returning to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us and judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. This is going to be another World War III update. Now it's number 30 something, don't remember exactly. But the point is, this war is heating up. World War III is the final prophecy that's gonna bring our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. When the nuclear missiles is shut off, Yahweh Shai is going to appear. When the nuclear destruction is happening, that's the moment of our salvation to be saved from the nuclear destruction. So I do these World War III updates to let people know how close we are because the scriptures say measure the times diligently. You measure them through the scriptures. So showing the people to build up to this World War III so we're not taken by surprise. So there's no excuse when the Lord come back and for whoever's not ready, they're not ready. No excuse. And I'm just a watchman. We got to warn the people. N not that we in any danger of World War III, but you know we all in danger of judgment. We all guilty seeking mercy. So in the middle of us seeking mercy, I'm going to do these World War III updates uh, just for more reason to seek our mercy and go harder for the Lord to be ready for his return. Now World War Three is heating up. You got Ukraine, they losing miserably despite all the help, all the billions of dollars they getting from America and all these European countries. They losing miserably. And Russia has even barely lifted up a hand towards Ukraine. Also, um, Ukraine just got hit with over 100 missiles. Supposedly, two of those missiles hit Poland. That's a NATO country, a European Union country. Also, um, you got Ukraine. They're without power, without water in the middle of winter. We're going to get all this information. Not only that, um, Europe, Europe and the U.S. could be entering into a direct war with Russia because of Poland being hit. Not only that, the United States and Europe is running out of weapons because they've been sending all their weapons to Ukraine. Now they're running low. So let's get into the information. I got the first video right here we're going to listen to. It's going to talk about the different places in Ukraine that was hit, how they got no water, no power. But let's continue. And missile strikes. Uh, inside Ukraine. So here are the confirmed. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. At least 18 <clears throat> confirmed missile strikes this morning in the country of Ukraine by a massive uh, cruise missile strike by Russia. Let's go on down. Ukrainian Air Force Command states that Russia has launched around 100 missiles today. 48% of Ukraine now is without power and electricity. Emergency is declared Poland to provide additional electricity water stations down to 30% in Kiev. Uh, Russia making large gains overnight. Ukrainian army in disarray. A spokesman for the Ukrainian Air Force said the Russian army has used about 100 cruise missiles in today's massive missile attack. According to him, this raid surpasses the missile attack on October the 10th in which 84 missiles were used at the moment. We know about the rivals and so these are all, 
the cities, and I'm going to try to pronounce some of them, Kiev, Kiev region, Sumni, Sumni region, Kharkov, Zaporizhia, Vesk, uh, Kovo, and Ravine. It said in Kiev it was confirmed that the building of the general staff and the operative command of the armed forces of Ukraine were hit. So Russia hit the command and control in Kiev. He said the mayor of Lviv reports a difficult situation. 80% of the city now is without electricity. The heat supply has been stopped and electric transport is not running throughout the city. Ukraine now has, uh, with 79% of power loss, next round of missiles, strikes is expected tonight. Ukrainian army in full collapse as they direct, uh, directed to provide assistance to the electrical grid. Now this is enough. So that's the update so far. You had over a hundred missiles that hit Ukraine in over 18 different areas. And what's the result of that? Now, 79% of Ukraine has no power. That's no electricity, no heat, no hot water, no electricity to cook, to heat your homes. And that's for what? Gas too. Things that run off of gas. Uh, that's that's uh, electrical as well. And what else? You got 30% of Ukraine without water. So it's going to make it um, almost impossible to live there. And not only that, the Ukraine military about to collapse because with no water and 30% of Ukraine, no electricity, no power in 80% of Ukraine, how they going to fight? They can't plug up nothing. They can't charge nothing. They can't get online, no internet access, no Wi-Fi, no cell phone towers, no communication, nowhere to refuel and recharge their military gear so they can't continue on the fight. So Russia played that very smart. That was under their new general, General Armageddon. He said he would make it turn out this way, but that's all over these hundred rounds of missiles that Russia just fired. And there's supposed to be another round of missiles that happened tonight, which they probably already happened. And these missiles, the next round of these missile strikes will finish off Ukraine. No mean it will wipe everybody off the map, but mean that it will make it impossible for them to continue fighting this war. Maybe instead of 80% of Ukraine being without power, maybe they'd make it more like 90 to 95% of Ukraine being without power. You know, maybe 50 to 75% of the country being without water. And that's devastating because they're in the middle of a harsh winter. Middle of a harsh winter, no electricity, no heat, no hot water, and no way to cook. So a bunch of people about to freeze and starve to death. But we're going to get on to the next clip, which is a little short. I'll turn a remark. Yesterday, Zelensky declared a major victory for Ukraine that it went in the war. Not 24 hours later, the whole country now is without power, food, and water, and the military is in full collapse. Yeah, so yesterday, you know, two days ago, Zelensky, uh, he thought that he declared a victory in Ukraine because some people may heard that Russian troops was pulling back out of a certain region. Ukraine and Zelensky took it as that they was winning the war and that they could possibly end the war and gain victory over Russia. Now, what happened, I knew in my spirit what happened. I'm like, Russia about to pull back so Ukraine can come forward. And then as soon as Ukraine come forward, Russia going to make all kind of missiles rain on them. And that's exactly what they did. That's like, if it's me and my boys and you and your boys, we having a street war. You know, we having a shootout, shooting at each other. I tell me and my boys to fall back. And then when we fall back, y'all step forward. Then while y'all stepping forward, we open fire on y'all. That's what Russia just did to Ukraine. That's not even a hard strategy to see through. 
I'm not even in the military and I knew that was going to happen. That's like, that's how you win wars. You appear weak when you're strong and appear strong when you're weak. You confuse the enemy. And Zelensky in Ukraine got pretty confused about what Russia was doing. And it became clear that when Ukraine thought they won, Russia sent all these missiles at them. So call hello, you have about shimmy how was shy. And then not after, not even 24 hours later, after Ukraine thought they had got a victory, what happened? Now 80% of their country without power, 30% of the country without water. They are no longer able to keep up with the war. None of their equipment working because there ain't no power over there. But hey, that shows you how the Lord could take something and just flip it, you know, like the like the flip of a switch. Let's get on the rest of this. So it's amazing how just in a few hours the whole situation can change. Huge traffic jam. I'll turn. So yeah, in a few hours anything could change. So like right now it's a war between Ukraine and Russia. And in a few hours it could be a war war. Russia versus the United States and Europe which is NATO, a few more hours after that, it can go from a conventional war to a nuclear war, all in a matter of a few hours. That's how the Lord does it. The suddenness of a, with the Lord is a scary thing because things can turn for the worse just suddenly. Now we're going to get into this next clip because the point is, you know, they rained over 100 missiles on Ukraine but as I said earlier, two of those missiles supposedly hit Poland, which is a NATO country. And we're going to show why this, is, why this is such big news. From, uh, this is breaking news coming in from Drudge and other uh, news outlets. This is coming in from The Express, which is a British publication. At least two dead after Russian missiles land. In the NATO state of Poland on the Ukraine border. And this has just happened in the last couple hours. You can see the uh, where the missiles hit destroyed a couple of trucks uh, and killed, I guess, the drivers of the trucks. It says two people have been killed in Poland after two stray Russian rockets landed near the border with Ukraine. The rockets landed in the NATO state following Russia's mass bombardment of Ukrainian cities earlier today, which saw over 100 rockets launched. According to the AP News Agency, a senior U.S. intelligence official said that the missiles were of Russian origin. Poland's Prime Minister, uh, Matuzes Mor Morawinki, I guess that's how you pronounce that, has convened the Committee of the Council of the Ministers for National Security and defense affairs as matters of urgency. Government spokesman uh, Paul Three Mueller confirmed with the local news sites claiming that this is likely uh, the result of the explosions. The meetings will reportedly take place at 9 p.m. local time or 8 p.m. British time. The rockets fell in the town of all righty, P-R-Z-E-W-O-D-O-W. -O -O -W. So I don't know how to pronounce that. Prez will go. Maybe that's it. Hitting grain dryers, whatever that is. It hit two grain dryers. I'm sure that's the military target that Russia was trying to uh, trying to take out, folks. A couple of grain, grain dryers. Evidently, these missiles went off course and, and hit these targets in Poland. It says the police prosecutor's office and the army are reportedly on the site. Meanwhile, the Polish armed forces are reportedly on high alert. The attack could prompt Poland to trigger NATO's Article 5 provisions, calling on all the treaty's members to attack Russia according to Article 5. An attack against one NATO ally is considered an attack against all allies. Some analysts have suggested the rockets intended. So y'all heard that, that these missiles that hit Poland could cause NATO, which is America and Europe, to activate Article 5. And what did they say? That 
all NATO countries would attack Russia. Now we're gonna show Article Five. I got the website. I got I got it on NATO's website. The principle of collective defense is at the very heart of NATO's founding treaty. It remains a unique and enduring principle that binds its members together, committing them to protect each other and setting a spirit of solidarity within the alliance. <clears throat> now, collective defense means that an attack against one ally is considered as an attack against all allies. The principle of collective defense is enshrined in Article 5 of the Washington Treaty. So yeah, if you attack one country of NATO, it's like you attacking all countries. And that won't respond, all of them gonna respond. And it's like over, over 31 countries in NATO. That makes up the European Union and the United States and Canada. So this could give the United States and the Europe to go directly at Russia and not fight Russia through Ukraine, but a direct war between United States and Europe and Russia, which would be a war of war. But that's the significance of those two missiles that hit Poland. And as I was scrolling through the comments, I seen something that stood out. But one thing that they said is that the missiles that hit Poland, uh, they wasn't supposed to hit Poland. Supposedly these missiles uh, flew off track 65 kilometers. Now that's a significant amount of distance to fly off track. That's about 32 miles. So for a missile to miss its target by 32 miles, something is fishy. And those were the missiles that hit Poland. Now, me, even before I read the comments, and many others, we suspect that those missiles that hit Poland was a false flag attack. Because remember, we was talking about something happening before the midterm election or around that same time, and that there's supposed to be a false flag. We think this might have been it. Now we're gonna roll, read through some of the comments to get some more understanding on this. Apparently the missiles were off by 65 kilometers from the intended target. That seems like a stretch for Russia to miss by that much. Yeah, cause with GPS satellite, missiles don't miss by that much in 2022. But um, there's some more comments. And the missiles that they found was this S-300 missiles and supposedly uh, Ukraine used the same missiles. So the, the missiles that hit Poland, you know, that they claim came from Russia, probably didn't come from Russia. They probably came from the Ukrainians. <clears throat> And this comment here, the S-300 are defensive missiles with a range of approximately 400 kilometers. False flag, anyone? And then also here, this comment, supposedly Russian ha have not used these missiles in 10 years. And people are saying that Ukraine do have Russian made missiles because you know Ukraine and Russia used to be allies so Ukraine could still have that Soviet war um, ammunition you know in storage they're gonna get a few more comments there's a lot more I saw on my phone but Y'all get what we're trying to say. Let's get this one. The S-300 Ukrainian anti-aircraft missiles. The photos from the scene prove that they are 20 to 30 
kilograms of TNT that landed in Poland, not a cruise missile. The holes are five by five yards across. The cruise missiles would have made a much larger hole, but to continue, the cruise missiles used by Russia are accurate to six feet. So the cruise missiles by Russia, they hit their target, you know, within six feet, you know, not no 32 miles. But um, also they said there are photos of U.S. aircraft flying over Poland, you know, around the same time that the missiles hit. Let me see if we can get any more real quick before we continue. Could it be the false flag that had been rumored about a week ago? This one here, what if the two missiles are not Russian? Yeah, I mean, there was a comment that I saw earlier that I'm not able to find, but somebody has said that they're already talking overseas, that they're picking up fragments of the two missiles that hit Poland. And those fragment mi missile pieces are not Russian made, that they actually from Ukraine. So it wasn't you it wasn't Russia that struck Poland. It was actually might have been Ukraine missiles. Alright, here go another comment. Hale Turner has photos showing that it was Ukrainian missiles being shot into Poland, not Russian missiles. So yeah, this is that false flag attack or one of many false flags that's coming up. Because Because what we got to understand is that the U.S. is running out of weapons. And that's why I got this video here. Let's just watch like 30 seconds of it. Europe burning through ammunition reserves. Yeah, because Europe and America had a certain amount of ammunition on reserve, but they, um, but they run it short. NATO staring at weapon shortages across Europe. So we're going to get into the reason for this false flag. That's, that's about it for that. Let's go into this next video. The United States of America is running out of weapons to give to Ukraine and Washington is in no mood to tap into the stockpile meant for its own military. That would mean that the US would snatch from its own military their equipment to provide the same to Ukraine. And that would be a national security disaster for the Biden administration. Therefore, that's not going to happen. And Washington has made its peace with the fact that its ability to help Ukraine militarily is is fast dwindling and there's nothing much it can do about the situation. Ukraine won't be happy with the USA's inability to provide it with lethal weapons as the war with Russia enters a critical phase. So yeah, so yeah the USA is exhausting its inventory in Ukraine. The United States has for quite some time now kept reserve equipment which could be used in an indirect war with Russia. It tapped into these reserves in the past eight months of the war in Ukraine. Now those reserves are about to be exhausted and in the case of some weapon systems have already been exhausted. That means that Ukraine is in for a tough haul marked with American weapon shortages. According to Fox News, the U.S. is already at, or is very near the end, of its capacity to give to Ukraine. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin signaled this week that the U.S. and its Western allies are having trouble keeping pace with Ukraine's demand for advanced weaponry. So yeah, people were saying that Russia was doing bad, but well, it's coming to the light who's doing bad. It's Europe, America, and Ukraine. 
Now, the reason for this false flag attack is because the U.S. cannot fight a ground war because America don't have the capacity, the manpower, or the ammunition, or the equipment to fight a war on the ground. Now, Russia has a massive, mili a massive military. They can fight a war on the ground, in the air, or the water because the U.S. no longer put major investments into fighting on the ground. You know, the U.S., they'd rather fly one of their jet bombers over there, drop a nuke, and call it a day. So, therefore, America put all their money into their Air Force and into their Navy. Do you know America got hundreds of military bases around the world? So, that's another portion that gets all of America's money would be the military bases. Not only that, on all these military bases, you got armed soldiers. So America don't have the manpower or the numbers or really the arsenal to fight a war on the ground like Russia is doing. And that was smart on Russia because they know that's where they um, that's one of their strengths is fighting on the ground, you know, conventional war, you know, man to man combat with explosives like World War One and Two. America can't do that. But since they trying to fight a ground war with Russia, they running out of weapons. So now they need to do a false flag attack to kick up the war another notch, you know, instead of fighting on the ground. Okay, now we fight in the air. So now the U.S. can then what? Activate their Air Force, uh, the Navy, their warships. America rather fight that way. They don't like fighting on the ground. Because what is America in the scriptures? It's, comp it's compared to as an eagle. Where is an eagle at its deadliest? The eagle is most lethal in the air. So America rather, you know, um, fight with their Air Force. And that's Obadiah. What is that? Like one in three? Do thou exalt thyself as the eagle? Yeah, because America is that eagle. They rather fight in the air. But with that false flag attack, you know, they can kick up the war another notch. But then they can activate... Article 5, because you got the U.S. that's sending weapons. You got some European countries that's sending weapons. But not all European countries are sending weapons. And we read Article 5 that an attack or a war against one NATO country, you have war with all the countries. So another quick way for the U.S. to get more ammo is to activate Article 5 to officially declare a war between Russia and all of Europe and the United States. So now the United States ain't just got their own weapons. They got all the weapons and all the military from all the European countries at their disposal. So now they got the firepower and the manpower once again since they running out so that's the reason for this false flag attack you know if the ukrainians actually did hit poland so that the united states could activate article 5 and have more weapons and military might you know from europe and that actually goes into revelation 13 to 4 and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast this dragon um or this beast would be NATO and they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him because that's why most countries they been they they in subjection to the United States because most countries know that they can't go against America even that they could fight against America what do America got article 5 NATO, the European Union, that if they fight America, they got to fight these 30 plus European countries. 
So who is able to make war with him? That's how most countries feel. Like, we can't fight America, you know, let alone with the other European countries. So the Article 5 is what kept all these different countries in subjection for all these years in fear of fighting the United States and the European Union. And then just a few weeks ago, some news came out that Biden actually went off on Zelensky over the phone. Zelensky was begging for more, for more money, more weapons, and Sloppy Joe yelled at him and told him to be grateful that the U.S. and the United States people has been more than generous to the Ukrainian people. So tensions is rising. So America is not winning the war. Ukraine is not winning the war. It's not about to die off. It's not about, it's not about to de-escalate. In fact, it's about to be kicked up another level with this Article 5. So that means we one big step closer to World War III and the nuclear destruction and the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Now, all that information, for what? To read this, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. But at times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Because we know the times and the seasons. We at the end of times. We in the season of judgment, the season of war, and all that. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night meaning all of a sudden when you don't expect it. For when they shall say peace and safety, and then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So the dead Lord is characterized by destruction. That's why when we hit Second Peter uh, 3 and 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, into which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's a destruction, nuclear destruction. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat from that nuclear fire. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up in the, in the nuclear destruction. So the day that these nuclear missiles are shut off, that's the day of the Lord's return. So that's the significance of this war being kicked up another level. Because we that much closer to the return of Yahweh Shah. And that World War III is the last thing to happen before the return of the Lord. What must happen before World War III? Well, that's Revelation 13 and 16. Any cause of all, both small and great, rich or poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So if World War III is this close, that means the mandate of the microchip, the mark of the beast, is that much closer. Because in fact, the mark of the beast has to be implemented for a certain amount of time for most people in America to be chipped before the nuclear missiles are shot off at America. The microchip got to be out for, for some time before the destruction. So that means we that much closer to the microchip, seeing how close we are to a world war and a nuclear war on top of that. So you know you had a, kind of a bunch of info, it's kind of jumping all over the place, but yep, don't be surprised. Before the end of this month, you hear that the United States and NATO are about to enter into a direct war with Russia. But we're going to see how it turn out the rest of this month. Time is flying by. So that's it for this World War III update. Until next time, Shalom.